सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली दर एस एस और द राष्ट्रीय स्वयं सेवक संघ has been in news all the time it's been in news for almost 100 years it's been controversial it is adored by many in fact increase by an increasing number of many it is also detested and disliked by many those numbers have also been increasing on that side on that polarized side it's a polarizing organization it was founded on 27th of september 1925 so in less than 2 years from now it will be 100 years old usually people who come to head the rss they are there for a very long time very long time so now the current chief is mohan rao bhagwat sar sang chalak is his title which means like the head or the chief executive of the chief commander whatever you might prefer of the rss he has spoken in detail to the rss his own publication the mouthpiece panjanya panjanya as you might know is the name of the conch or the shank that lord vishnu used to blow so that is the name of the mouthpiece of the rss so rss chief mohan bhagwat has now given a very long free willing interview to two senior journalists of panjanya that is hitesh shankar and praful ketkar and it's it's courtesy them courtesy this interview in panjanya that we have today's episode of cut the clutter because the rss and its chief have always been a significant voice but never more significant than now because for 8 years now it is the rss workers who been in power it is the rss people who been in power in delhi and in many large states of the country so the bjp bjp is an offspring of rss we know very well so when the rss chief speaks out now that is something to talk about in detail and we've read that i've read this carefully it's in hindi and you know what my hindi is not too bad i might have a few problems with english right uh, i'm a hindi medium type but my hindi is not too bad and wherever i had some trouble with some really complex formulations or some unfamiliar words so as not to risk getting some nuance wrong i also consulted a member of our marvelous hindi team shiv pande so after all this extensive reading extensive and careful reading i have picked out for you a bunch of news points these are news points where this sir sang chalak is saying something new or where something that he has said in the past he is taking that forward and also the areas where he is talking about rss is well known familiar and firm view but also also where he is bringing in nuances there and the important thing is that today he also talks with the confidence and comfort of somebody who knows that his people or his disciples or pupil have the power in india and they are likely to have it for quite some time so that confidence also shows and that's why you find very often he is inclined or he feels he feels that he has the liberty to stray outside of his crease he's cautious his back foot is behind the crease but he is now more willing to explore on the front foot so i will i will list out some of these key points for you now since the rss chief is sort of thinking aloud and sitting back and talking expansively he says that in the past his organization had a lot of kantak kantak is kanta or a thorn which can mean obstacles or pitfalls on the way and he said these came from the fact that popular opinion was opposed to them that in popular opinion in politics there was a lot of opposition to them there was a lot of criticism he says now the environment has changed so as the environment has changed so have our obstacles and pitfalls in fact he now describes them more as pitfalls than obstacles he says for example now that the environment has changed media comes to us and we have to talk to the media we have to engage with the media it doesn't say stay away from the media he says we have to engage with the media but we should not become prisoners of that which means we should not get so obsessed with publicity that we lose our sense of proportion and judgment similarly he says and that's a little bit loaded because it might be a reference to somebody in the rss who's gone to the bjp he says that look now if you go to a, rail, a railway station if you arrive at a railway a lot of people come to receive us acha lagta hai it feels very good 
all right you can feel good people will come to receive you so don't ban people from coming to receive you but again don't become prisoners to it don't become obsessed with it so these are the new obstacles or new put or the new pitfalls he says i thought this was a little bit interesting because he said don't fall in love with this that means the chief of the rss has begun to worry about how the followers of his organization or adherents of his organization or those trained in his organization and its culture are now dealing with this acquisition of power then he goes on to talk about sangh and politics rss and politics and he says look there is always been media curiosity about the rss and politics everything is seen with the political prism these days so many things happen in our society awful things happen but people let them pass but people don't let anything political pass because see they see everything through a political lens or the expression he uses is rajnitik chashma chashma is this pair of glasses right uh, rajnitik chashma everything is seen through rajnitik chashma he says he says the rss has nothing to do with day to day politics vote politics or the politics where one undermines the other to that our answer is no we don't do that but those aspects of politics that affect national policy we are interested in and these are hindu hit desh hit rashtra hit right which is hindu interest and national interest and he says these run samanantar va samanarthi these run parallel and synonymous and he says it is true he says he says things have changed it is true that while the sang was coming up its swayam sevaks were not sitting on seats of power but they are now sitting on seats of power because this is a bjp government which means it's an rss government and he says they are now in government they are sitting on seats of power so they do whatever they do sometimes they don't do stuff that's very good that's very edifying or things are said which are rude and whatever they do and whatever they say sang has to rss is blamed and he says to some extent the rss has to take that blame because after all they trained in our culture so if you're doing something wrong there must have been something wrong in our training and he doesn't use the word indoctrinated exactly but i am using that liberty but implying indoctrinated at the rss if after that also they do the awful things it's their fault and he says rss has never never been away from the government and power we've always reached out irrespective of who's been in power and he makes a very fascinating point and i'm surprised that more of the media hasn't picked it up he said even when pranab mukherji was pranab da he uses even when pranab da was finance minister there were many concerns on the economy that the rss would take to him and he says that pranab da would listen to us and incorporate our suggestions into his policy now that is not something that make the congress party very happy but the fact is but the fact is that the bjp government gave pranab mukherjee bharat ratna and also pranab mukherjee as a retired president visited the rss headquarters and spoke there so there was a certain warmth there which also sarsan chalak has spoken about and then he said look there was recently a traders conference and they had concerns about gst income tax ease of doing business etc etc we would also listen to them and we will take their views to the government but that will be irrespective of which government is in power then he says and this is very significant probably the heart of the interview he says hindu society has been at war for a thousand years so if he says a thousand years you can make a safe presumption that is beginning to count from the point that the first muslim invaders came into india that was about a thousand years ago and he says since then this war has been going on and he uses an expression videshi log videshi prabhav videshi shadyantra which means foreign people foreign influences and foreign conspiracies so he said for thousand years we dealt with that but now we are awakened and this awakening tradition has been on from the day the first invader came to india and he counts as the first invader not any of the muslim invaders from 9th century onwards etc he counts alexander the great as the first invader and he says the since the first invader came into india this awakening has been on and now it has reached a peak and he says this also came from the teachings of chanakya who was post alexander and similarly they been many other inspirations both for war against outsiders and also war against enemy within what that enemy within is he doesn't specify so much and once again he talks about something that's very important to him and i will again use what exactly he says in hindi he says hindu dharm hindu samaj hindu sanskriti ki suraksha ka prashn hai this war is on 
that I have to, that our war is on to protect Hindu faith, Hindu society and Hindu culture. And then he goes on to say that this is all synonymous with India, etc., etc., but that is in the course of the conversation. Then he says, now foreigners are not the threat. So foreigners are not there, but foreign influences and conspiracies are there. And he says, in this war also, sometimes you will find that harshness comes in or sometimes you will find people get bigoted or use bad language, which is something that has to be avoided. So he says, while it's very fine to chant Jai Shri Ram, it is very invigorating, it's a good idea, but at the same time, he, he has a lament that, you know, what good is it if some people can be flogged just for riding a mare at a wedding. So he uses Doli Charna, I am translating it a bit more liberally to mean that he is most likely referring to cases where Dalits and others, they are sometimes beaten up or they are humiliated for daring to ride a mare, a ghodi at a wedding because that is something that upper castes in many areas don't like. So he is showing his disapproval for that. He's saying. Shouting slogans to invigorate yourself is one thing, but real reform and strength has to come from within. And then this lament continues, the how much have we learned over time and he gives an example from Shivaji. He says, look, it's one thing to say that we have we've been at war for a th thousand years, but who you are at war with, what kind of war it is, who you want to fight, when you want to fight, who you should fight who you should not fight, you learn that from Shivaji. He says Shivaji was so successful because he developed his own ideas of warfare. Why? Because he understood his enemy. So you understand your enemy first. And he says once he became a sovereign and became confident, then he reached out to Muslim states in the neighborhood and struck friendships with them. And there is a message there. And he gives the example of Shivaji reaching out to Kotub Shah, the ruler of Golconda meeting him and, and, and saying, look, you and I can be friends, we have no problem, just do a couple of things. Just take two Hindu ministers in your cabinet. In fact, the expression he uses is Amate, Amate is minister. So, so take two Hindu ministers in your cabinet and stop all atrocities on Hindus and, and we can be friends. And Mohan Bhagwat says that it was by striking these alliances, even with Muslim rulers, that Shivaji was able to keep everything stable around him and around his empire. It's only after his death that some of his ministers went back to Katarpanth or bigotry and then they changed things. So first of all, he uses the expression Katar for these ministers who succeeded Shivaji after his death. Then he uses the same expression or same description for Christians and Muslims. So he says Katar is Sai or, 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 or fundamentalist Christians. They want to convert the entire world to their own way. They say we will convert the entire world to our own way or those who don't convert to Christianity will have to live on our pity. And he says similarly, the same view, a similar view, Qatar Muslimano ka bhiya, Qatar Muslims also have. And then he goes on to say, the same view communists can have, capitalists can, can have, but Hindus never have, right? Hindus never have, that is what he's saying. Then he says, now we become strong. Hindus have become strong. Nobody can harm us. So fighting is not all. And he gives the example of Garibaldi. He says, Gary Baldi won a war and then he said, look, I wasn't designed to rule, so I'm not going to take power. So he says, it's wrong to think that whoever can fight and win a war can also rule. So he's Sarsang Chalak, he's giving the equivalent of his sermon or his wisdom through this interview. I'm only trying to simplify it for you. Then he takes some questions on contemporary social issues. For example, LGBTQ issue, homosexuality, etc., etc. And he says, look, some people think that the best was always ahead in these matters and discourse of the neo-left has been backward looking or negative. He says, as far as Trithiya Panthis are concerned, so Trithiya Panthi is an expression he's used for transgender. So he said, look, in our culture, there's always been a place for transgenders. Within families, there are people who are transgenders. They have their own temples, they have their own mutt and now they have their own religious heads, etc, etc. So there's never been a problem with transgenders in Hindu society. All these are things that he is saying. I'm not giving you any opinion for or against. Be careful. Then he says, he says, as far as homosexuality is concerned, that's a biological thing. A lot of people are like that. Now that to me is progress simply because too many people from many religions, particularly those who speak from deep inside the religion, they still see these as mental illnesses. They don't see these as natural, biological, 
diversities but he says i do and he says i am a vet i am a trained veterinary doctor i also see these among animals so these exist among animals these exist among human beings and then he takes you back to mahabharat and he says jarasandh who was one of, one of the commanders of Kaur kauravs he says jarasandh has two commanders hans and dimbak they obviously had a relationship between them and he said and he says it is lord krishna who spread word that one of them had died so the other died by suicide because he could not handle the loss of someone he loved so much so if the mahabharat has a mention of distinguished commanders who had a homosexual relationship and lord krishna himself used that relationship to bring them to death because they were on the wrong side that means there is no prejudice then he talks about population which is again a hot button issue and he says that with population birth rates are not the issue first of all he says you need a population policy but you cannot enforce a population policy you just have to make people more aware you cannot enforce any law or population policy there cannot be any compulsion awareness helps and then he says there is no problem with birth rates the problem arises with large scale conversion and infiltration if you address those issues and population imbalances will not matter you might remember that he had mentioned similar things in his dashara speech as well where he had given the example of kosovo east timor and sudan where countries are broken up because of what he calls population imbalance east timor for example indonesia is by and large muslim but east timor was overwhelmingly christian and ultimately broke away from indonesia that is what he is referring to and that's been one of his pet hobby horses then he answers the question on muslims and he says there is no hindrance to islamic worship in india however and i am quoting him again if muslims want to go back to their ancestors they can do so i am again now quoting him in hindi as he speaks islam ko koi khatra nahi he says there is no danger to islam लेकिन हम एक समय राजा थे वी वर वंस द रूलर्स हम फिर से राजा बने वी विल अगेन बिकम द रूलर्स ये छोड़ना पड़ेगा यू हैव टू गिव अप दिस नोशन हम सही हैं बाकी गलत वी आर राइट ऑल अदर्स रॉन्ग यू विल हैव टू गिव अप दिस नोशन हम अलग हैं इसलिए अलग ही रहेंगे वी आर डिफरेंट दैट्स वाई वी लिव सेपरेटली हम सब मिलकर नहीं रह सकते वी कांट लिव टूगेदर ये छोड़ना पड़ेगा यू विल हैव टू गिव अप this notion as well and then he and then he is very careful and i know that many of you would have concluded that he is saying all of this to muslims no he says it applies to all communities it applies to hindus as well and also very interestingly communists so you know what sir sanchalak is learning some politics as well because if you read this interview and i will share the entire text with you in hindi maybe in a couple of days we'll try and give you an english version also if you read this interview one you can see caution then you can also see progress progress from old rss notions he talks a great deal about the place of women in the rss the need to bring women in more actively in the rss the lgbtq issue etc 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 so you see progress in many areas at the same time remember this is the rss and this is the chief of the rss speaking so you can have a view for the rss against the rss or you can be indifferent but the fact is today this organization and this ideology is at the heart of india's governance it's been so for the past 8 years and right now it is not just the center and the large number of states including some of the biggest states in india as well so you have to understand this organization all of us have to understand this organization where it's coming from how its thought processes are evolving and what better way to learn that than from the chief of the rss himself on the rare occasion when he speaks out in detail